The two most important questions in veterinary dermatology to answer are what are the infections and why are they there? Whenever we have a primary underlying disease, such as allergies or endocrine disease, approximately 80% of the dogs will have secondary infections. If we don't identify and treat those secondary infections aggressively, we really won't have very much success treating and controlling the primary disease. In order to screen for secondary skin infections, we need to perform a three-slide technique. This will involve performing ear cytology and ear swab, performing a skin scrape to rule out demonicosis and scabies, and perform cytology either on the crusting alopecia rash or on the thickened elephant leathery type skin, which is typical of yeast dermatitis. The three-slide technique should be performed on every dermatology case, whether it's the first visit or each and every recheck visit. By making sure that the three-slide technique is performed, secondary infections will not be missed. To perform the three-slide technique, we will first obtain ear swabs and apply them to the slide. To make this process efficient, I take the left ear swab and apply it to the left side of the slide. I then take the right ear swab and apply it to the right side of the slide. This way we have a single slide with both ear cytologies to make the process more efficient. After performing a skin scrape in the typical manner, we will apply the sample to the slide and mix the sample with the oil to evenly distribute the material within the oil on the slide. We will then look at this under low power 10x objective with the condenser down to increase the contrast of the mites. Once we've obtained our sample by applying the crystal clear acetate tape to the skin of the ventral neck, axillary area, or inguinal area, we can then stain the sample by applying the tape to the slide, pressing on either side of the tape, but allowing the middle section to be unadhered. We can then take our stain and apply one or two drops to the periphery, which will wick underneath, allowing the sample to be adequately stained. Any excess stain can easily be wiped away with a paper towel. When we're looking for the primary disease, we need to ask ourselves, why did the secondary infections occur? And most often, this is going to be either due to allergies or endocrine disease. Of the allergies, pollen allergies, flea allergy, and food allergy are most common. Of the endocrine disease, in big dogs such as Laddie, hypothyroidism is most common. In smaller dogs, Cushing's disease would be more likely. If the dog is pruritic, such as Laddie here, then we should look at the four body regions, which are the hallmark symptoms for each of the allergic diseases. For itchy dogs, such as Laddie, we need to try to identify the underlying cause of the pruritus, or itch. So for Laddie, we're going to look for scabies, and the most accurate diagnostic test for scabies is to take the ear pinna and scratch it in our fingertips. If she thumps her back leg, when I rub the tip of the ear pinna, then that's 80% diagnostic for scabies. Flea allergy dermatitis almost exclusively affects the lumbar area. So if we draw a line at the rib cage, if most of the skin disease is from the rib cage back, that would be very consistent with flea allergy dermatitis. One of the most unique symptoms of food allergy in dogs is perianal dermatitis. So if we examine Laddie's bum, and we see any evidence of dermatitis, erythema, alopecia, or lichenification, we're going to very strongly suspect food allergy. Dogs that are pollen allergic almost always lick their front feet. So performing a good examination of the feet is essential to identify any pruritus or salivary staining that might be associated with the pollen allergies. Such a good girl. Are you a good girl? Good girl, yes you are.